Thanks. Uh, thanks very much for the introduction. And I'm very honored, I'm honored here to um, present our research on the um, acceleration of the uh, transaction execution for Ethereum. Uh, my name is Andy. I'm the uh, professor uh, from Zhejiang University of China, and I'm also the co-founder uh, of BlockSack. Um, so uh, before I uh, uh, dive into the details of the um, transaction execution, so let me give you some background of the uh, pair execution. So what is the pair execution? Why do we need the pair execution? And what's the issue of uh, you know, uh, executing a transaction in parallel? So uh, as you may know or you may not know, the EVM is a single thread uh, program which only you know, executes the transaction one by one. So uh, if you have a couple of transactions inside of the block, uh, each of the transactions will be executed uh, one by one. They cannot be executed in parallel. So suppose we have um, two transactions I'm showing, I'm showing in this slide, like the uh, transaction T1 transfers the tokens from uh, account A to B, and another transaction T2 transfers um, the tokens from account C to D. So actually, they can um, execute it in parallel because these two transactions, they do not have any state dependency, right? So all the, the state changes in transaction T1, they do not affect the state in uh, transaction T2. But if the T2 transaction is trying to uh, transfer the tokens from account A to C, then these two transactions, they cannot be executed in parallel, right? That's because the states in, uh, effect, uh, changed by transaction T2 is affected by the transaction T1, so they cannot be uh, executed in parallel. Um, we have some uh, formalized uh, definition of the transaction um, dependency, but I will not go through all these you know, formalization things. I just, uh, you, you just need to know if two transactions, the uh, read set or the write set of the storages, they have some um, intersections, then we will say these two transactions, they, are, they depend on each other, so they have the transaction dependency. Um, OCC uh, algorithm is uh, actually a very uh, mature uh, algorithm used by the database you know, to, uh, for the concurrent uh, execution. So the basic idea of the OCC algorithm is that we can first, if we have a couple of transactions that need to be executed, we can first execute this transaction in parallel, and then we need to validate whether these transactions, whether these uh, uh, executed transactions, uh, can, uh, uh, they, they, whether they have some uh, state dependency uh, in the validation stage. So if they have some dependency in the states, then that means we cannot execute this transaction in parallel. But if we execute this transaction in parallel previously, so what, what we can do, we can, you know, um, about all the uh, transactions that has a state dependency, and then re-execute these transactions to avoid the, 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 the uh, incorrect result of the execution. So we have an example here. Suppose we have two transactions, as we shown before. Uh, transaction T1 transfer the tokens from A to B, and another transaction T2 transfer tokens from C to D. So we can, uh, so in the uh, first, uh, after these two transactions, they can be executed in parallel. And after the uh, execution of T1, we will do the validation uh, to see uh, whether, this, uh, whether there is any you know, dependency on other transactions. And this, uh, transa this validation can pass, and the state change will, will be committed. And for the uh, transaction T2, we also uh, perform the validation uh, process, and uh, this validation uh, process can pass, and the, uh, states, the state change will be committed. So after that, the state change of account A, B, C, and D you know, will be committed into the uh, system, and they do not have any dependency. But if we have uh, these two transactions, so for the transaction T1, the validation uh, still can be success. That's because you know, the T1 has, do not have the uh, state dependency, but for uh, transaction T2, the validation will be, uh, will, will not, will, uh, cannot be passed. That's because the read set of the account A has some state dependency with the transactions T1, right? So in this case, we, will, uh, we cannot 
directly commit the state changes performed by the transaction T2. What we can do, uh, we will uh, about the execution of transaction T2 and re-execute these transactions so that, because uh, when re-executing this transaction T2, the state change performed by T1 has been committed and we have the native states, right? So we can re-execute the transaction T2. So uh, basically, if we, if we have a couple of transactions and uh, we use the OCC algorithm to uh, paralyze, to, to execution this transaction in par uh, uh, paralyzingly, uh, the speed up will, uh, depends on the conflict of these transactions. So the world, in worst case, if each transaction has the state dependency with the previous, with other transactions, so uh, we uh, actually we do not have any speed up, but we will have you know, even worse performance uh, about the transactions because we uh, execute all these transactions and we re-execute re the transactions. So the speed up depends on the number of conflicts uh, during these transactions. So we can take a closer look of the conflicts of the actual smart contract execution. So uh, let me use an, a real example of the ERC20 token uh, smart contract as an example. So in the uh, ERC20, ERC20 token transfer, usually we will check the balance of the MAG sender to ensure the uh, MAG sender has enough balance you know, to transfer a token. So if we have a couple of transactions which uh, transfer uh, the tokens from the same account, this will create a large number of conflicts, right? Because they are reading the same uh, states from the same account. And we perform some empirical studies. We use a, a transaction from January, 20, uh, January 1st uh, last year to July 1st last year. We, uh, and we observe the, the, the conflict of the storage uh, operations of these transactions. And we find that the access to the storage slots are not um, equally distributed, uh, and, uh, and they are uh, obvious the hot spot of these uh, storage slots. Like 0.1 percentage of the slots account for more than 60 percent of the uh, access uh, access accounts. That means this hot spot storage they will cause a large number of conflicts, right? So if we are uh, executing this transaction in parallel. So uh, because of these conflicts, all existing the, the, the uh, parallelism strategies are based on the transaction level dependency. That means if one transaction, uh, the, the validation of one transaction fail, we will redo the whole transactions. And the uh, real world speed up of existing parallelism strategies are limited by the trivial but frequent conflicts. So how can we solve this our problem? In fact, we propose a new algorithm which do not re-execute the whole transactions, but we only need to re-execute part of the transaction, inside, part of the operations inside the transaction to you know, have a better speed up. So, uh, what's the problem of the traditional parallelism, algor uh, parallelism algorithm? As I just said, the entire transaction have to be serialized due to a single storage uh, sonotic conflict. So we can dynamically uh, split the transactions into uh, different types of operations. So we can parallelize the conflict-free parts of the operation inside that transaction and we can serialize the conflicting parts, right? So by doing so, we do not have to re-execute the whole transactions when a conflict happens. So, uh, in, so uh, because of this idea, we add another phase in, uh, inside the validation phase. So if a subset of the uh, a re read set uh, conflicts, we only redo the related operations instead of abort aborting and restarting the whole transaction. This is the uh, basic idea of our algorithm. So I can use an example to uh, uh, better illustrate our algorithm. So suppose we have a transaction uh, T1 and a T2. So uh, because the validation of the T2, they will fail because of the conflict, right, of the uh, storage, the state of the account A. 
So in this case, because uh, during the execution, we have we, we will perform extra knocks of this uh, uh, the execution. I will I will. Uh, talk about the, what, what's the operation knocks later, but we have the operation knocks during the execution, and then we can redo uh, uh, the transaction T2, but we, do, uh, we can redo the part, uh, uh, we can redo part of the transactions T2 instead of, you know, re-executing the whole transaction in T2. It, uh, when redoing the operations, we use the latest uh, value of the account uh, a the, the the balance of account A is 90 instead of, uh, is 90 instead of 100, and uh, we will uh, re-execute these operations, and uh, we then commit the results of T2 inside the uh, uh, no uh, the the word state. So in order to redo part of the uh, transaction, like in order to redo the operations uh, of the transactions. We need to maintain the extra information when executing our transactions. We must maintain the operation log from conflicting inputs to the affected outputs. So let me use an example here. So suppose when we're executing the transfer um, uh, functions inside of the transaction, so uh, the, the, because the transaction is executed you know, using the opcode, the EVM opcode, so we first, uh, we need to uh, know that the uh, the value of the you know account uh, the balance of account A from the storage. So this is S node operation. So we have a shadow stake to knock all these uh, operations. So each operation, uh, each knock, uh, each entry in the operation knock will uh, record the opcode uh, operands and the relationship between uh, the, the 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 output. Uh, to the input, I, I will show you there. So, for the uh, for the S node operation, we will put an entry inside the operation log saying that this is S node uh, instruction, and we will load the uh, storage uh, from uh, uh, we will load the storage uh, from the snot, and uh, the value is 100. And uh, this operation log, the, the index of this operation log is one. Then we have the dupe one operation. After that, we will have the uh, greater than operation because the greater than operation is used to compare the balance of the MG sender to uh, a fixed value, right? Uh, to, to compare uh, uh, the balance of account A to 10. So in this case, we will have another operation log, the operation log two. The operation log two is a greater than of, uh, of Opcode, the opcode of this operation now is, greater, is GT greater than, the operand is 10, and the output of the operation one, right? Because we need to compare the value of current uh, account, uh, the balance, current balance of account A to 10. And the current balance of account A is the output of the operation log one, right? So we will, put this information in the operation log two. After that, we will have a jump I instruction because this is a conditional jump, right? It will depends on the uh, comparison result of the balance A and the 10. So in this case, we will um, replace the, we will uh, add a property of the operation two because it's a constraint. We only execute the following instructions if and only if this comparison result is true. Otherwise, it will revert, right? So the, the entry two in the operation knock is a constraint. It says that we need to, the, uh, the output of the operation one should be bigger than 10, and uh, uh, should be bigger than 10, should be greater than 10, and we can, uh, if, if we, only in this case we can, you know, continue executing the following instruction. Otherwise, they will revert. Next, we will uh, we will perform a sub opcode. That's because we needed to, you know, deduce the, the balance from the uh, account A. So we will input uh, the the third uh, the log in the operation log. So this operation log is a sub instruction. It will say it will uh, using the output value from, from the first uh, operation, and it will deduce 10, right? So this is a, a third operation. And after that, uh, we have the S star. We will commit our result to the uh, address A. 
So by um, constructing this operation now during the execution, we can uh, redo the part of the instructions when a uh, conflict occurs, saying when the validation of this operation fails, we can redo, we can redo this uh, operations, right? We can only redo these operations and use the uh, next value of the account balance A, uh, uh, nine, nine zero instead of the 100. So we can uh, re-execute these operations, right? We can re-execute these operations. So this is the uh, basic idea of the uh, operation level concurrent execution of the Ethereum transactions. So we have implemented such a system on the Go Ethereum and uh, with around like 4K9 uh, so code change. And we need to evaluate our system from two perspectives, right? One perspective is that we need to ensure the correctness of our system. So if our system they perform some you know, error result of the uh, execution of a transaction into a, you know, useless, right? It cannot be used. So in order to evaluate the correctness of our uh, system, we can, you know, replay all the transactions from the block one to the latest block and uh, compare the water state between our system with the Valina uh, gas client. So if there is any inconsistency between them, then something is wrong with our system. So it's easier, you know, to uh, perform the correctness validation. Uh, another uh, evaluation we have performed is the performance uh, evaluation. We want to understand how much speed up can be achieved, you know, using our uh, operation level concurrency uh, algorithm. And uh, to perform the uh, to perform this evaluation, we have uh, replayed five million um, blocks from the uh, 11 million to the 11.5 million um, um, blocks. And we uh, use this, uh, we, we feed these uh, blocks using the uh, vanilla gas and our system, and we compare you know, the execution time of all these blocks, all, all of the transaction inside of these blocks. And the speed up is around 4.28x uh, 4 uh, uh, speed up. So that means we can have around um, 400 percentage uh, speed up of the execution speed. And most of the blocks are accelerated by a two to seven, you know, uh, X uh, speed up. And we also uh, have some optimizations of this, our system. Uh, we want to perfect, prefetch some uh, storage, you know, SNOS uh, when uh, doing the uh, execution. Uh, the prefetch uh, optimization is not proposed by us. We just uh, reuse some existing prefetch algorithm to speed up the uh, EVM execution. And uh, we use the same uh, blocks, the same transaction inside the same blocks, and we can achieve around seven uh, x a speed up when we have we uh, we have when we use our algorithm uh, uh, and the uh, prefetch optimization. For the uh, cost of our system, because we have maintained extra information right inside the memory, the operation log, so. Uh, we have around 5% uh, the memory usage increase because we need to maintain the operation logs for the stake. Uh, I didn't talk about the operation log for the memory, uh, but we still uh, maintain some extra information uh, about that. And it's around 5% uh, uh, memory usage increase, so it's, uh, it's acceptable uh, from our perspective. And how to, you know, how to use this, uh, our algorithm, or if we have um, optimized uh, 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 gas client, uh, what use this scenario can our system uh, be used? I think first uh, we can, you know, increase the block size if the, uh, if the, if, uh, if the gas client can be applied by our uh, algorithm, because uh, we, we, we can speed up the execution of the transaction, so we can put more transactions inside a, a block, so we can increase the block size. Uh, the second user scenario is that uh, we can have a better MEV searcher. That's because when you perform the MEV searcher, you need to, you know, um, you need to, you try to um, um, order the transaction inside the block, to see uh, whether there is a, a profit, whether what's the maximum profit uh, when uh, when performing the ordering of the transactions. So you need to you need to have a very uh, efficient system to do that. 
So we can, if we, if the uh, uh, MV searcher, they can, you know, apply our system. I think they can have a better result uh, with uh, the same time. So this is two possible user scenarios. I think there are more user scenarios. So the takeaway of uh, this talk is that the current um, transaction execution is, is, you know, they cannot be uh, serialized, and the traditional uh, parallelism algorithm like OCC. Uh, it's not effective because uh, when there is a conflict inside the storage, the, the whole transaction will be, you know, uh, re-executed. So we perform a fine-grained uh, parallelism algorithm for the extreme execution, uh, transaction execution called operation-level concurrency. So instead of re-executing the whole transactions, you know, we just re-execute part of the uh, the operations part of the instruction inside the transactions when a conflict is detected. And we have uh, implemented such a system and our system can have like uh, 4x to 7x speed up uh, compared to the vanilla uh, gas client. So this is, uh, so, so uh, because I'm a uh, co-founder of Bloxa, Bloxa is a security inf uh, pro uh, infrastructure provider, we have a couple of tools and systems are provided to the community, so I will not talk, talk about too much about this. Yeah, this is a uh, whole of the talk. Thanks very much. Thank you. Are there any questions here in the room? There is one. Um, thanks. Um, I wanted to ask, like, from an ablation perspective, like, if you split the transaction into a part that is still valid and that has conflicting, you 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 said that you improve over just rerunning the transactions, but like, did I miss why it's not just enough to rerun the conflicting transactions as a whole and not need to necessarily do all this complexity, like? I, I'm, I'm asking okay. because actually, like, in 2017, <laughs> we built a system at scale that, that did that, and I don't know why you'd want to go into the operations itself. I missed that. Could you explain? Okay. So if I understand your question right, so the, 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 so, the so because currently the, the EVM clients, they cannot, you know, paralyze the execution of the transaction, so they just execute the transaction one by one. So in order to speed up the, 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 uh, uh, naive, uh, the, the direct solution would be, you know, we can, uh, we can borrow the existing concurrent algorithm like OCC from the database. We can uh, run this transaction in parallel, and we, if, if there is any static conflict, we can re-execute the transaction using the latest state instead of the, uh, the older state when you run the transaction in parallel. So our algorithm performs a little further. We do not need to re-execute all the transactions. We just you know, need to re-execute part of the transactions you know, to speed up the, the whole process. So this is the whole story. Were your, Sorry. Were your improvements numbers relative to like the native sequential execution? Yes, native or sequential. Or are they relative to the uh, oh. re-executing the transactions yeah. that, uh, so, that, so that that's the relevant yeah. question, no? Yes, yeah, thanks. thanks. So uh, the number shown in these slides is compared to the vanilla gas, which means the, the transaction is actually in parallel. And for the OCC algorithm, like the reaction the whole transactions, uh, our um, speed up is, is around a two, a two four x. Yes. We have time for one more question. Yeah. Uh, how do you see the perspectives of merging this change actually into the GET implementation? Are you aiming for this? And uh, what could be the main roadblocks? So, uh, can, can, can you say again? Sorry, I, I didn't get it off. Uh, what do you think about the uh, prospective merging of your changes into the actual yeah. Geth client? Are you trying to do that? And what would be the main roadblocks or counter-arguments against doing this? Thanks, thanks very much. So currently, we, uh, we just finished this prototype, and we have uh, submitted a paper. And the next, uh, next step of that is that we're, we're trying you know, to push our, our change into the uh, official gas uh, repository and to see uh, how the community responds to, uh, respond to our change. Yes, thanks. Amazing. The time is up. Thank you so much, Andy. Thanks.